All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. I hope you're all pumped up from Dylan's keynote because I know we all certainly are. I'm Emily Lin. I'm a product manager at Figma, and I'm joined here today by Jenny Wen and Priya Kotek. And we are a small part of the mighty team behind FigJam. And today, we're going to share some of the behind the scenes of the making of FigJam. In case you missed it, Dylan just announced it earlier this hour. And FigJam is Figma's new online whiteboard where teams can ideate and brainstorm together. It is now in our beta period and will be free for that beta period for the rest of the year. And surprise, we are actually in FigJam right now, and we're going to do our entire presentation in FigJam. So wish us luck. So you might be wondering, why did Figma decide to make a whiteboard? Well, 2020 was a very eventful and interesting year for remote work. And as teams embraced working from home, we started seeing our community use Figma in really creative ways that we didn't even design it for. And we were so inspired. Here are some examples. We saw a bunch of people start publishing things to the community with really useful kits, with whiteboard-like components, with sticky notes, doodles, diagram arrows, all for better collaboration with their teams. And we even saw people use Figma as a space for the community to ideate and hang out. One of my personal favorites is the Stay at Home Valley, and there's also things like the High Five Zone, and I don't have it right now, but Figma and Chill. And honestly, it just makes sense. At the risk of sounding cheesy, our mission is to make design accessible for everyone. And if you look deeply into it, design is not just pixel pushing and UI screens. Design is also about everything that comes before, the messy ideating, the riffing, the bouncing the ideas off of one another. And design isn't done by just designers, but by everyone who touches the end user experience. Design is cross-functional and collaborative. And that early part is such an important part of building a product. And with FigJam, users can now use Figma's products for more and more of that process. So you might be wondering, all right, how did we go from, yes, we're interested in this, to where we are now with FigJam launched? Well, for that, let's take a, bit, like, let's take a step back and look at Figma's life so far. Figma has just a short life of about 10 months so far, and a couple of the milestones that I'll call out are, in June, that's when we had our kickoff. September is when our first engineer started, and it was only earlier this year that we did our internal and external testing. For the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about that first part of it between June and September, because that's really when we started to figure things out. So it's June, and we decided we wanted to build a whiteboard, but that's all we knew. Where should we go next? We had a lot of things to figure out. And luckily, we had a small and mighty cross-functional team jump in on it. And on the right, you can see a screenshot of an actual timeline of the plan that we had set out for ourselves for June. And it was very aggressive, but we got it done. And this is what that first month looked like. We did so many user interviews. We had a week-long design sprint and so, so many working sessions. And it was such a productive month because we came out of it with a direction and a general strategy. And while this screen doesn't share the whole strategy that we had, these are the few key things that we knew we had to get right. First, we knew that FigGem had to be easy for everyone to use. It has to be as simple as a real life whiteboard where you can just walk up to the board, grab a marker, and start sharing your ideas. You don't have to worry about, does the file have the right permissions? Do I have the right tool selected? The board is just there, and we wanted FigJam to emulate that experience. And second, while there were many things we could have focused on, product teams do, a feature list that we would have to go on and build. And so here you can see a screenshot from a real review that we had in June 2020. There are a couple of things grayed out. We also added a bunch of new features, by the way. 
Um, things change as they do, and it's interesting to see where we started. Next, we had a direction, we had our feature list, and we started exploring solutions and what a whiteboard might look like. I remember that in July, me and Jenny actually spent an hour, sat down, and wrote down all of the questions that we had and that we knew that we had to figure out, and there were so many questions. You can see a small selection of them on the screen right now, but if you look on the bottom right, these questions are actually just a small part of all of the questions we knew we had to figure out eventually. These are questions like, should the toolbar be in the top left? That's where it is in Figma, and maybe it's good for, to have it in the same place so people who have the muscle memory can just throw their cursor to the top left. And frames, do frames make sense in FigJam? They're useful for you know, framing things and for putting things together, but are frames too complicated as a term and concept for folks who are not familiar with design tools to understand? And what about components and the z-index and layers? And do we want a limited color palette? We had so many questions. And we slowly made our way through all of them. Um, many working sessions later, we had answered not all of the questions, but enough of the questions to have a starting point. And so here are a few screenshots of what our initial proposal for FigGem looked like. You can see there's a simplified UI. We really thought about how diagrams might work with shapes and connectors. And here you can actually see a first pass at the integration of the libraries, uh, the ones shared with Figma, right, in FigJam. And so back to the timeline. Between September, that's where our first engineers joined, in January, we did a ton of building and iterating and building and iterating and slowly making our way through that list of questions. The next milestone that I want to talk about is one that I'm really excited about, but in mid-January, this was this year, just three months ago, we opened up FigJam for internal testing with our team. And this was so scary for us because we had so much missing functionality still and so many rough edges, but we also knew that we had to get FigJam in front of users so that we can start making it useful. And it was a great success. We had a Slack channel internally that was really easy for anyone to contribute to, and we had over 100 people share over 2,000 messages of bug reports, ideas, feedback, and more. You can see a small selection of them on the screen right now, and while I won't go into all of the 2,000 messages, I will give you a quick TLDR. So like I mentioned, it started out a little bit rough, we had a lot of missing functionality. And one of my favorite examples is, we actually hadn't built out the way for users to manually change the color of sticky notes and shapes until later on. It was randomly tied to your multiplayer color only. And so for three weeks, our poor coworkers had to refresh if they wanted to change the color, and refresh multiple times if there was a specific color that they wanted. Thank you all for dealing with that. And you can see on the right that there are also a lot of bugs. Uh, text would show up in the wrong places, boxes were in the wrong places, and one of my favorite bugs was one where if you accidentally made the shape too small, the shape would actually run away from your cursor. You'd have to chase it to try and grab it. But slowly and surely, FigJam became more and more useful, and it was so exciting because I would just drop into a document and see a diagram made in FigJam, or teams would share screenshots of their brainstorms, and it would be in FigJam or we would hear of teams having regular fun team meetings, and it would be in FigJam. And we really felt like we had something that could work. People were beginning to use it for their real work. But something was nagging at the back of our minds. It really felt like something was missing. And on that cliffhanger, I'm going to pass it off to Jenny, who's gonna tell us about that journey of finding that missing piece. Hi, I'm Jenny, and I'm a product designer on FigJam, basically, since the start of it. And I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a few very special parts of FigJam that are core to the soul of it. So these are features that were late-breaking and things we were not really sure that we were ever going to build, but we are so, so glad that we did. Dylan showed these in his demo, but in case you missed it, it included the emote and stamp wheel, cursor chat, and the toolbar that we have at the bottom. Earlier this year, we started building FigJam, and it was really starting to feel like a real product. You could add shapes and stickies, and we even started using it in real brainstorms, like this one. You could say things were going well, but 
it didn't really feel like we were making our own mark as a tool. It really felt like the tool was missing something, something that would make us uniquely Figma. And one thing that we saw in both Figma design and FigJam that we kept coming back to was that just some of the most fun moments at work in the past year was just doing random stuff, either during a design crit or a team meeting in a Figma file. So there's like weird things like this where you end up jamming in a file at the same time as someone else and you have this like crazy side conversation just using text boxes. Or for some reason, your team decides to make a Canadian goose migration formation and synchronize their cursor movement. Has anyone else tried this or is this just us? And we know that teams are even making whole activities out of this. I want to shout out to the Asana design team that runs something that they, call, that they call Trash Dinosaur, where they make random collages together, and they just spend like an hour doing this together. When we can do something spontaneous and weird with other people, it feels incredibly human and incredibly satisfying. It's sort of like goofing off in an office together. Sort of like this. I personally got really emotional looking at these photos. We just look so energized and so happy, and I miss it so much. I also want to acknowledge just how much work goes into planning a workshop and how vulnerable you need to be when you're getting your work critiqued. In an in-person setting like this, you could get really critical feedback, but seeing other people's energy and expression and body language, it made it feel safe and it made it feel energizing. But today, all of that gets lost. You know, you plan a big workshop and then you look over into your Zoom screen and everybody just sort of looks like this. And then in your head, you're like, oh my god, are they just fo really focused? Do they really hate this? Am I doing a bad job? This is from an actual brainstorm that I planned, and I just remember feeling a ton of anxiety about this. And without that energy coming across, it's really hard to feel safe. And if you're not feeling safe, then you can't feel creative. You can't really be generative with your team. So through this, we recognize that just how important it is to let loose, to get silly, and to just share your emotions when you're in a virtual group context. So, even though there were small moments of randomness already for teams in Figma, we wanted to think about ways that we could bake this feeling into the product by default. So, to really boil it down, the question we asked ourselves was, how might we make collaboration more fun, more expressive, and more human by default in FigJam? And I also wanted to stop here for a brief note on delightful design, which this might feel like it's leading to. And if you're not familiar with the idea of delight and design, I'll share a few really good examples from a few years ago. So MailChimp had these really cool illustrations that they did with their monkey mascot. They were celebratory and customers really liked them. Yelp also had these really nice pull down to load animations of a rocket ship that people had a lot of fun discovering. But then I think it ended up taking up this whole thing where it felt like every app needed to have illustrations, Easter eggs, quirky animations, and confetti. It was a lot and it didn't always feel great. So now we're at this point as an and as an industry where we sort of bucked back against this old definition of delight. We now know that you can't just add confetti, a cheeky illustration, and snarky copy, and just call it delightful. We know that what's really delightful sometimes is just making a tool really usable and reliable for people. So given that, we wanted to approach this tension of giving FigJam the soul and identity as fun, but we also, didn't want to do, we also wanted to do it in a way that was still useful and thoughtful. So an important part of this process for us was creating principles based on both the experiences we loved and experiences we didn't love. They were both a north star and guardrails for us to design around. So our first principle was to be authentically collaborative. We know that every team is different and every team has its own rituals and every team should be able to create their own rituals. We shouldn't say like, hey, every team needs to collaborate this way or work this way. We should give everybody the building blocks that they need to do what's right for their teams. The second was making room for self-expression. If we make it easier for people to make stuff together as a team or customize how they use the tool, they'll feel a lot more ownership and pride over it. It's sort of like when you make your own furniture and you feel like really good about that. And third was useful but not necessarily utilitarian. I think this one feels obvious to a lot of people, but we had to state it. Figma as a design tool is very utilitarian, efficient, and focused for a lot of good reasons. But for FigJam, which has way more live and multiplayer uses, we wanted there to be more play. At the same time, we also knew we, we couldn't compromise it being useful. And then finally, nicely crafted moments. We know that designers are our existing audience, and designers almost unanimously said that delight to them was when they could tell people put extra care and attention into a product. So polishing and pushing our craft here was really worth it, even for an early launch. 
So when we started brainstorming ideas based on these principles, I really wanted us to think about how people might feel and react when they're using Fake Jam. We sketch out our ideas as if they were people tweeting their reactions to them. That way, we, this is the same way that we see a lot of people react to Figma's features today. It helped anchor us onto specific moments and feelings instead of getting bogged down on how things might look or work right away. And the first idea we rallied around was creating a much more tactile and prominent toolbar. In our alpha, you can see we started with a toolbar that mirrored the top left toolbar that we had in Figma design. It worked, but it really was nothing special. But then we were really drawn to this concept of feeling more like a workshop toolkit and anchored it to the bottom of the screen like a dock. So today, you can drag objects like shapes and stickies onto the canvas from the toolbar. It's also the first thing you see on the canvas, so first timers who have no Figma experience can easily get started too. We really hope that this is a nicely crafted moment for FigJam. And the next one is cursor chat. This was actually a Maker Week prototype from 2008 that, or 2018 that inspired us. We, d we experimented with emoting from cursor chat directly and also trying to do something a little bit more like a traditional chat. But today, they're light and temporary and just meant for quick interactions. You can type messages that feel live, just like typing on a canvas. The messages fade away after just a few seconds. Hopefully, this feels authentically collaborative for your team. And then emoting actually came about through another Maker Week project from last year, where a team experimented with using a, a wheel to quickly access emojis and react to anywhere on the canvas. We also experimented with a few different other ways to emote, like through a reactions menu, but I think we were really drawn to the wheel, which is borrowed from a video game interface. And then stamping. This was also an idea borrowed from a prototype from 2018. It was also something we knew that was super important to FigJam use cases, where people needed to vote or plus one other ideas. So we experimented with it in FigJam, including ways to add your face to the canvas. And ultimately, we decided these two features, they made sense to be two sides of the same wheel. One side to emote, to react to things really live, and the other side to stamp, to vote, and to leave small stickers on the, on the board. We really hope that these make room for self-expression. When we started testing all these hacky versions of these features internally, the interactions and visuals, they were all wrong at first, of course. But still, people just lit up when they used them. They were smiling, they were making weird stuff, and just letting loose. At this point, we really were not sure if we were even going to ship these features, but these reactions people had made us know that we had to ship these concepts. And the rest is history. The features are in our product ready for you to use today. I really can't wait to see what weird stuff you're going to make. Please make sure to send us screenshots. I'm going to pass it over to Priya, who's going to talk about naming and testing. Thanks, Jenny. Hi, I'm Priya, and I'm a product marketing manager at Figma. And I'm going to share a couple of stories with you. The first is actually how we landed on our product name. So earlier this year, we had a pretty good idea of how this new whiteboard product would look and feel. We'd started using it internally. But what we still needed was a name. So we pulled in Figmates from different teams, and we kicked off a work stream to find one. Now, naming a new product can get pretty nebulous. So to keep us on track, we started off with a few guidelines. First, we knew our name should tie to the Figma brand. We didn't want to create an entirely different brand identity with this new product. Second, we wanted our product names to work together in a system so they didn't feel disconnected from one another. And finally, because having fun really was at the heart of this product, we wanted our product name to convey that as well. So with these principles in mind, we started to explore ideas. And this included thinking through new names for our current product as well. We thought through a bunch of different op options and approaches, and you can see a few of those systems here. So we considered naming our products after the physical spaces they actually represented, the canvas or the whiteboard. We also thought about naming them based on the outputs that are actually created in those spaces, the interfaces and the ideas. And we thought about naming them after the activities themselves, the parts of the process that each product is best for, brainstorming or design. And this process led us to some top contenders that we thought worked pretty well together. So we tried them out, putting them in marketing materials, in product flows, seeing how they actually worked. And seeing them in the wild really helped us narrow down our choices. But something still felt off, even as we looked at them. While all of the names worked well together, none of them really captured that sense of fun and joy that we were looking for. We kept coming back to a name that a small group of us had actually come up with the summer before. 
It was our internal project name, FigJam. FigJam came from the idea that teams would be jamming together in Figma, so it nicely tied to the brand. It worked in all our product flows and in marketing. And most of all, it captured the joy that we all felt when playing in the product together. So in this case, it took a long and thorough naming process for us to realize that the right name was in front of us all along. I also wanted to share a little bit about how we built and involved FigJam together. Building FigJam really was a company-wide effort. And in many ways, it was a community-wide effort as well. The product you see today is the result of so many teams across Figma and so many users within our community. In February, we kicked off a super secret early access alpha. You may have heard about it. Opening up such a large alpha for a brand new and confidential product is no small feat. It took every team at Figma, from sales helping to onboard customers, to engineers and marketing helping with usability studies, to IT helping us create a space to actually collect this feedback. We knew the approach was risky, but we felt it was important enough to get feedback from real customers and their real use cases. And we're so glad we did, because the feedback we got helped us think through workflows, usability, and new features. These are just a handful of examples, and I'll go through a few more, that we, a few more changes that we made based on conversations that we had with users. So in the alpha, we saw just how frequently teams would be using FigJam for activities like brainstorms, retros, and stand-ups, where it was really helpful to actually track who shared an idea or an update. When we kicked off early access, our stickies didn't have names, but we added this as a default soon after, and now you have the ability to turn this on or off. Another learning was around copy-paste behavior. So as a part of early access, we did a series of usability studies with folks that were less familiar with Figma and with design tooling. And in those, we realized that people couldn't actually tell whether they'd successfully pasted an object because it appeared directly on top of the original. So to make this more obvious, we actually changed this behavior so it works differently in FigJam than it does in Figma. Pasted objects are now slightly offset to make it a lot more clear that you've actually pasted something. And one last example I'll share is around setting up boards for workshops and meetings. So as users set up activities and templates, many of them wanted a cool background or color behind them. But if they added these and then tried to add objects or stickies, they wouldn't actually be able to move those objects around without also moving the background. So to help with this, we actually brought the ability to lock and unlock objects into FigJam. So these are just a couple of examples of the few things we changed based on feedback. We got hundreds of comments and so many more things um, that changed based on the, the advice that we got from early access customers. Uh, beyond early feedback, we also knew that the community would be a great place to share and discover new ways to use FigJam. So to make this happen, we worked with FigMates and users to create templates for FigJam that are available today. And with community publishing, now GA, we're hoping to see this grow as more of you start to play and explore in FigJam with your own teams. I have one last example of how we built FigJam with the community and how everyone at Figma really did get involved. So this is a screenshot from about a month ago where Andrea, who runs all of Figma's web marketing, came up with an idea to work with artists in the community to create fun and unique stickers that people could use when jamming out with their teams. This was an idea, it was dropped in Slack, and in true Figma fashion, folks from different teams quickly jumped on the idea, and by the end of the day, we had a project brief and a game plan. So when you try FigJam later today, you'll see 10 custom sticker packs created by FigMates and artists in the community. It's been a real joy for me personally just to see how many people at Figma and how many users have helped us shape Fig, shape Fig Jam into what it is today. And I'm so excited for that to continue throughout the beta. I'll hand it back to Emily for some parting thoughts. All right, so here we are at our parting thoughts. And that's it for the brief history of the making of Fig Jam. After all of the things that we've gone through, here we are today with FigJam Beta now available for free for everyone. This was a whole company effort. We're just here representing a small amount of all the people who've put in so, many, so much energy, love, and craft into FigJam. Uh, please send us your feedback. We're just in the beginning of our journey. There's so, still so much more that we want to do and that we have to do and we can really build the future of FigJam together. We had so much fun along the way, and we really hope that this fun, love, and good vibes comes through to you when you're trying out FigJam with your teams. Thank you so much. <laughs>